I woke up this morning and I saw this tweet. Every word in that message is a pickaxe chipping away at my soul. And then I saw this tweet, the one that it's talking about, and I was like, wait a minute, I actually know this guy, Frying Pan. It looks like, you know, he's making an announcement tweet about getting into Y Combinator. And the response tweet from the same person was, I would open source his knee ligaments, to be honest. So let's get some context here. But basically, Pan made like an announcement post. He got into Y Combinator. They're working on an AI code editor. Everybody has heard of Copilot by now. It's technically not an editor. It's like an extension for VS Code. And it's available on some other IDs as well. So I guess, you know, my question is, what even is an AI code editor at this point? Because like 99% of the value is just the LLM underneath all of it, right? Whether it's Claude or GPT. But anyways, but from a business perspective, it's very interesting to do that. They've actually been working on this for several months now. And their announcement tweet, not only is our code open source, us as founders are open source as well. We post our entire development journey and life online through YouTube and live streams. They made kind of the cliche, you know, I quit my job to do X, Y, Z. I think most people at this point realize that this is like a marketing move. This isn't necessarily representative of who they are. I made a, you know, I quit my fang job or whatever video. So you can't fully judge them based off that you kind of have to be a douchebag you kind of have to portray that it's about attention the reason why people were so mad about this and some people were very uh, mad about this is kind of i think like the question i was originally asking where's like the value being created because we have vs code i know there's vim blah 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 who cares if there's a single editor that you'd want to control, it would be VS Code today. And so Copilot's been out for a while. There are some other like extensions that you can add, which give you kind of some AI assistant coding ability. And recently, another one came out it's called Cursor. And so that's actually not an extension. It's a fork of VS Code. So this is kind of its own thing. And this gives them kind of a precise ability to really control the experience. And now Pair AI, the one that we're kind of looking at today by Pan, is similar to Cursor in that it's a fork of VS Code. The difference between Cursor and Pair is that this one is open source. They're both paid in that if you want like the best functionality of it, you have to pay like a monthly subscription, similar to Copilot as well. The reason people are mad about Pair AI is that this is actually not a fork of VS Code. It's actually a fork of a fork. So that's kind of the problem here. People think that this is where most of the value was created in the original fork. And so this fork here, Pair AI, is just using open source to make money without necessarily giving back. If you just kind of go through Twitter, it's not hard to find people that are mad about this. You probably have this as your hinge profile pick, huh? Just a little bit of the sentiment. So I think some of the criticism, as usual, is not warranted. The big accusation here is that Pair AI, which is open source, but it's also a product. So, you know, it's open source in the same way that MongoDB is open source. But most people who use MongoDB are paying for the servers, you know, usually directly to MongoDB, which, you know, in general, it's a good strategy to create value and to also capture some of that value. Because what I'm more concerned about than like this tech stuff or he said, she said is kind of the business strategy because business and money, those kind of rule everything. You can be mad on Twitter, but that's not really what matters. So Pair AI, it's an open source fork of VS Code, but it's not a direct fork of VS Code. It's actually a fork of continue. So continue is here and it's actually pretty popular as well. So it's not like nobody's heard of this, but this is a fork of VS Code. I'm not an expert on either of these. You know, I barely just started using cursor, believe it or not. But I don't think that they stole anything. I, th I think they forked something. I think some people are mad that you can just take a product, fork it, 
and then get into something like Y Combinator. So some people are saying, well, the value of Y Combinator is diminishing because of that. From my very humble perspective, was there any value to begin with? I think five, 10 years ago, everybody wanted to work at Fang, get into Google. Now everybody kind of wants to get into like startups and be a founder. Founder is kind of the new prestigious word. Everybody wants to be a founder. It's like a status symbol. I think Pair AI, I guess the whole concept of an AI coding assistant is interesting. It's definitely valuable. Now, if coding is going away in five to 10 years, if nobody's going to be writing code, well, then why are people building AI coding assistants? Why are people investing in coding assistants? Why is Y Combinator still investing in companies that have nothing to do with AI? YC is still investing in email providers, literally email providers, something that you'd think is a very old established technology. And the answer, of course, is nobody knows what's going to happen. And of course, I don't really know what's going to happen either. But with all like this AI stuff going on, like there's so much noise. It's like if you follow this day by day, every single day, there's a completely different thing going on. Everybody's using GPT-4. Well, now actually Claude is the thing. If you're not using Claude to code, you don't know what you're doing. Okay, well, now everybody's using Cursor. Cursor's the thing. Okay, well, now the new GPT came out. Okay, well, now there's Pair AI. And so if you try to follow every single thing, you're going to go crazy. I mean, there's just so much crap going on. The approach that I take just because I need to try to preserve my sanity, anytime I see something on Twitter, I just ignore it. Like one data point is not enough. But if I hear about something for a couple of weeks, like, okay, I, I might have a two week delay before I actually start to notice. But if people are still talking about something after two weeks, there might be something to it, whether it's GPT or like these AI coding assistants. And by the way, from what I've used of Cursor, it is significantly better than Copilot. So quite honestly, I do wish I had tried it sooner. I wish I had tried it a few weeks ago, but those few weeks really didn't cost me much. And I probably skipped using a lot of really garbage technology and I can live with that. That's the trade-off I'm willing to make. The whole topic of what's fair and what's not. So there's this tweet and my friend Pan is probably not doing himself any favors uh, with this one. You legally relicensed Pair to an enterprise non-open source license called Pair Enterprise Edition, even though Continue is Apache 2.0. Your project violates multiple terms in the Apache license. You should sue these clowns. And so the response, uh, dog, I chat GPT the license. Anyone is free to use our app for free for whatever they want. If there's a problem with the license, just let me know. I'll change it. We busy building right now. Can't be bothered with legal. So let's try to give the benefit of the doubt where possible, because it's very easy to take something like this out of context. Well, technically, it's not out of context, but it's easy to take one thing and just kind of ignore everything around it and just say, OK, well, this is dumb. You know, we could spend a lot of time reading some of these replies. But before you even get too far into that, just hover over like their profile once in a while and you'll realize that you're just hanging out with a bunch of bots okay so if you're still using twitter today you might want to reconsider because it's just a bunch of bots at this point okay shortly after it looks like pan did take care of the legal stuff probably a lawyer helped him with that probably somebody from yc for what it's worth i think when companies invest it's just the probability that there will kind of be explosive growth so anytime yc invests in a company at minimum they're expecting like 100x on their investment and so when you think about it from that perspective kind of investing in a bunch of companies that have a one percent chance of success of living up to that 100x investment your odds are not that bad and so if people are looking at pair ai and thinking well shit, what is yc doing why would they possibly invest in something like that? The answer is pretty obvious. AI code editors are pretty hyped right now. It's impossible to know whether that's just hype that's going to evaporate shortly or if that's actually something there. When you're an investor, especially in the VC world, you don't really have the luxury of waiting it out the same way I do or you do. You kind of have to make like quick decisions, even make decisions that you think are probably going to turn out to be wrong, but you kind of have to kind of get like a small just slice of that. So I think given that, it's pretty easy to find a bunch of people on Twitter who are wrong. But for me, this kind of takes me back to open source because this is not new, guys. I'm not a super old person either, kind of in my late 20s, but I vaguely remember that Steve Jobs and Bill Gates 
didn't they do the same thing? They're not the first people that came up with the graphical user interface or the mouse or whatever. I'm pretty sure there was a company, I believe it's this one, that had a very, very significant impact on the operating systems we use today. And I think like the moral of the story is that creating value is actually relatively easy. Just create like open source software or like a million other things. Creating things that are valuable isn't always super difficult. But when it comes to the software world, capturing some of that value, capturing the money is the difficult part. When you think of something like Linux or Git, like open source software, and you think about the value of that software, like the impact that it's having, Linux is having a tremendous amount of impact. You can't really quantify it, but if you say that Microsoft is like a trillion dollar company, Linux could be comparable, even though Microsoft isn't just an operating system. But it's all about money. Why Combinator are investing so that they can make money, not to create good software or whatever, or to impact the world. And I think the world is better today in that, like, if you want to create a new database or something like that, the business model is pretty obvious. You can create open source software, give it away to people. But nowadays, if you're giving it away to people, you're not doing it out of the kindness of your heart. You're trying to build up like a user base, especially when it comes to software like databases, front end frameworks, whatnot. You want to have the user base. You don't just want a small number of paying customers. You want to create a culture. You want to hire a bunch of dev relations people. You want to hire influencers, put some sponsorships in there so you can create this ecosystem. So, I mean, overall, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking open source software or trying to create a business model out of it. I think from a business perspective, it's probably going to be very difficult. And if I had to flip a coin, I'd say probably they're not going to be super successful, but the risk isn't really on them anymore. When they did not have any funding, it's definitely high risk because you're kind of spending your own money. But now that they actually do have investors, I think they're not like in a bad position. They're probably not making as much money as they were before. But nowadays, people just want to enjoy what they do. And I don't really blame them. I'm kind of sitting here doing the same thing. And I better get back to it. So I'm going to go write some code now. Maybe you guys should think about doing the same thing.